New day, new goals, let's own it. In this episode of season three, Leaders Create Leaders, we're gonna go meet up with the homie Christian Guzman, founder of Alphaly. And the whole episode is about starting small, but thinking big. Now, I know a lot of you think big, you have ideas, but we're gonna get into what it truly takes to make these ideas a reality, which most people don't. And we're gonna get into the inside story of how Christian built a multi-million dollar fitness empire, a community of over two million people, a gym that used to be under a thousand square feet to now like 30,000 square feet, and how he did it all by the age of 24. So let's get right to it, none other than the story of Christian Guzman. so impressive what you have been able to accomplish um, in such a, a short period of time, but it's, un, it's really unbelievable. And um, you become such a huge inspiration for a generation, I feel like, within fitness now. I mean, you just, you know, we were talking today and uh, you know, it's like you got really, you're very business savvy as well. You know, you have like four different businesses that you're, you're, you're building right now. Um, you take the time for yourself, for your health. You take the time to build, like, real, really engage with your community. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to get into all of that. Mm -hmm. But, like, first and foremost, I always love to kind of get a little bit into, like, the backstory about where you, you know, obviously grew up here and, and what was it like kind of growing up and um, what inspired you to, to become who you are today? Uh, for sure. So I, I think, you know, a lot of, if you ask that question, sometimes people don't have, like, this crazy story. And I feel like yeah. I'm one of those people. I feel like... I was born here in Houston, Texas, uh, Sugar Land specifically, and to be honest, since the day I was born and came home till today, uh, I've lived in the same area. My, my parents, the, like all the, the businesses, the gym, we're all within a five mile radius. And so I've literally grown up in this town. And uh, you know, my parents are still married. They have a great relationship. I went to public school. Uh, a and B student, you know, a few C's here and there. I wasn't, I wasn't amazing at school. I wasn't. A really, B student is pretty good. A B with a little bit of C's, a little bit <laughs> okay, of C's okay. here and there, um, but you know, there was nothing really. It was a very average sort of, you know, every upbringing, I guess. I've read that you mm -hmm. talked a little bit about in high school, people looking at you and saying, you know, he's the skinny kid so, with like the guitar. So it, it it was skinny, yeah, but for me, I was actually very very shy growing shy. up. Uh, like I was very open at home with my brother, with my, with my parents, everything. But when I went to school and I didn't know everybody, it took me a very long time to warm up to people. Um, I remember, I mean, I'd be very open with maybe like one or two people that I'd become friends with, but yeah. everyone else, I was just almost scared to, I was scared to talk, I was scared to read out loud. I was really, really hesitant to just kind of put myself out there. And um, at the time it was always kind of, not poking fun, but I was known as the really, really quiet guy, the one that doesn't talk or doesn't answer and kind of just like nods his head, yeah. you know, in, in group conversations. And um, yeah, very shy, like all the way through, even going into high school, very shy as well. And uh, I started break out in high school. I started getting into fitness and everything like that. But yeah. until then, it was pretty, pretty bad. No. It's interesting. Like, I feel like a lot of people struggle with one of two things when it comes to like, I don't, you call it entrepreneurship, call it creating your own lane, like just going all in on yourself, following your dreams. But like, it's either they have a tough time like really figuring out what that one thing is that they mm -hmm. want to do, that they love, that they want to go all in on. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then the other issue is they have this passion and they figure it out, but they struggle taking those next steps. Yeah. Like actually like, go, like committing, making, mm -hmm. that, making that commitment, having the discipline, having the belief system how did you, how did you gain that in your life? Like, and so I, what I was think, the trigger? So for me, I, you know, I, I really liked fitness in high school. High school, graduated, went to college, uh, got accepted in a good university, and that that's when everything sort of changed for me. Because then it went from fitness was a really a deep hobby for me. I was you know spending all my time watching videos of Greg Plitt and instructional things online and YouTube and yeah. all these workouts and tips, nutrition advice and things like that. And I was accumulating like all this knowledge and I kind of became like the guru within my friend group, yeah. kind of locally, you know? Yeah. And going into college, my friend group, obviously we all went different ways and I was forced to start fresh like everybody else. And I had a tough time 
it could have been the school I went to, it could have been whatever, it could have been anything, right? But I had a tough time sort of finding my group that I matched up with there. And so that left me honestly kind of not lonely, but I didn't really have many people on my side, so I turned even more to fitness and more to, man, I was, I was really enjoying this and I love this, and so I actually picked up a camera because I wanted to be like the guys I was watching. Yeah. And I just wanted to put some stuff online. Uh, my second semester of my freshman year, so eight, 18 years old, 19 years old, and uh, I just turned 19. And I guess that trigger was, the trigger to get into it and get started was literally not really fitting in. Yeah. And, um, you know, on the weekends, I, I literally wanted to be sure I could sleep enough and have what I thought was right. I was doing like nine meals a day. I was eating every hour and a half because I thought that's what I had to do, which isn't true at all. But, right. you know, at the time, that's what I thought. And I just wanted to do that right. And I, I didn't want to lose any progress. I was obsessed with it. Yeah. And probably unhealthy, uh, it was unhealthy how obsessed I was with it. But at the same time, it was, it was, it was just, I was so dedicated to it, you know. Yeah. And I think I credit that obsession, I guess, with that's why I'm where I am now. So what I love about Christian's story is he didn't let anything get in the way of his vision. He started at 15 years old as a guitar instructor before becoming a trainer. He used that model to scale to about 100 clients. And I'll quote, he was proud but never satisfied. He used that model to scale. And honestly, I believe that's the spirit of the American dream. But the next step that he took changed the game. What's up guys, Christian Usman from Christian Usman Fitness. What's up guys, Christian Usman, Christian Usman Fitness. What's up guys, it's Christian Usman, Christian Usman Fitness. Guys, Christian Usman, Christian Usman Fitness. Just got done um, hardcore dieting for about four days. Um, I'm starting this channel because about for about five years I've been strength training, hypertrophy training, and um, I just want to share my experiences and advice. You know, I think that the, the first initial sort of obstacles that came up were the whole, not starting a YouTube channel, but leaving what was comfortable, right? I was in school, I was doing well, good GPA, and I was still balancing things, but I knew based off of my, my businesses I had already established while in school, I was like, man, like, this is this serious, I can do this, right? But even though I, I literally had hard proof and evidence, like, hey, look, I can do this, I, I can do what I wanted to do then, I'm, I'm making the same income now, and I'm 19, you know what I mean? I can imagine if I had all my time to dedicate to it, and I could have the physical evidence, but that, even with that, I mean, None of my friends, literally zero. Zero understood, zero were, I had no support with that. My mom cried for all summer. I was like, hey, mom, <laughs> I, I don't want to, she's like, think about it all summer, every day, just crying on the phone, convincing me not to do what I was about to do. Oh really? And leave. What's interesting is that a lot of people are not good at school, so they yeah. jump out, like me, I was like, man, school doesn't really feel right for me. And you, know, mm -hmm. you, you actually, you know, you could probably yeah. become a you know, doctor or something, you mm -hmm. know, but your parents probably had a hard time with you dropping out. Huh? Yeah, it was, it was more my friends, my mom, you know, aunts, uncles, they heard the news and there was, it was a lot of you're making mistakes. You're about to make a huge mistake. He was filming at TCU, at the dorms, he was doing videos and, and he was just so excited. You know, we thought he was crazy. We would see him with a camera. What the hell is he doing, man? Put that thing down. And really, the only support I had was coming from my dad because he had always been kind of the, you know, yeah, go for it, you know. But that was the number one obstacle. And I think that's when the shy Christian Guzman never spoke up for himself. That's the first decision I ever really made for myself was to do that. If you wouldn't give him that door to go through right there, I think he would have lost that opportunity. That fire would have just been blown off and uh, I think he uh, would have just passed that. We have things in us, and we can create. There's room to create and just uh, go after it yourself sometimes, you know? He was working out of the house, and he was just selling all these meal plans and workout plans. He would come downstairs, he's like, Mom, I sold so many today. <laughs> it's like, wow. He would keep a journal with all of his sales. He was just doing so much and just Everything was going to savings, savings to start this business. One time, we're driving around here at night. Why don't you open a little gym, Christian? And he goes, yeah, so where? So let's go look around. And we went, we drove around, and we found this this little place. It's a sweet 501. This is how big it is. We get this whole parking lot, because it's on the corner, to do whatever you want. Tire flips, sledgehammers, sleds. Today is November 29th, 2013, and I'm about to place my order for the majority of my gym equipment, the new gym I'm opening up. 
and uh, my heart's beating really fast, guys. I'm very excited. I don't know when I'm gonna put this footage up, but I'm just recording it because it's a big moment in my life. Um, this is the beginning of it. Let's click submit together. And we click submit. My order has been received. <laughs> been waiting for this day for a long time guys um, I've known what I wanted to do since I was 15 years old and it's finally happening and like I honestly can't really believe it right now so we're officially beginning it's an awesome feeling guys following your dreams and really you know Work so hard, you know, and it works out. So. We have our own place, and that's it, guys. Well, today's the start of something new. It's gonna be a good, good investment, and uh, yeah, been through a lot. Going, you know, starting out with this and having the guts to do this, and it's gonna pay off. starting small and I feel like that's where a lot of businesses fail right away a lot of businesses will try to start too big you know they think they're too um, you know they just automatically think they're gonna get so much business just from opening you know Woo! so after Christian launches his gym successfully and he's building his personal brand really doing YouTube every single day building that up gets over a million subscribers on YouTube he knew though the next step had to be something bigger than his name, bigger than him. And that's when he decided to start the brand Alpha Leap. This new company, it's called Alpha Leap. You take the word alpha, you take the word athlete, and you get Alpha Leap. Alpha Leap, what does it mean? It stands for the people that are not scared. The people that go after their dreams, the people that are leaders the leaders of the pack, the people that set examples that others look at and want to, they want to follow those footsteps, they want to be something more. The people that don't need permission. I see the place where In the beginning, we set out to establish a brand that would mean more than t shirt sale. And now I sit inside the storm. We envision creating a group of people who together, believed in striving to become better versions of themselves. Two and a half years later, we far exceeded our expectations. You, have an, you, you can have an impact on people's lives. You can have an impact on how someone handles certain situations or, or, or things that they learn or things that they incorporate in their life. And for me, that's enough pressure. That's not, it's not pressure, but that's enough of a reason to honestly give my 150% every single day. That can be taken at any scale. It doesn't have, you don't have to have 100,000 followers on Instagram. You don't have to have, you don't have to be speaking to a stadium. You can have a little brother, a little sister, or a cousin, some, someone in your life that you could be that, that leader to them. You could be that role model, you could be that inspiration, where even if they don't say anything, they never vocalize it, they could look at you and they could, they could, they look up to you, you know, and I think that every single person has that, has that in their life. Son, daughter, cousin, family member, friend, that you just have to hold yourself to a higher standard. So being a leader to me is holding yourself to a, a standard that you set for yourself that is still yourself, but you're, you're conscious that you want to be the best that you could be. Showed up. Yeah, we think God. a lot of people are gonna be here. Oh yeah. <laughs> here is the turn egg. Let's see if anyone showed up. Let's go. Let's get started, man. Oh, we need to get started. We made it to New York. Wait, wait for Rob. Oh we gotta wait for Rob, gotta wait for Rob. Hey, what's up, bro? What's up, man? How are you? How are you? Like, 
I've read a little bit about the fact that like when you, your your main goal is to just transform people's mm -hmm. lives. Mm -hmm. Has that kind of become like? Have you thought about like your purpose? I know it's like early on. You have so, you've accomplished mm -hmm. so much. At the same time, man, you're you're you still have so much ahead of you. Mm -hmm. um, so it's pretty amazing. Um, but have you thought about like at the you know what really why you're doing everything that you're doing? I think the the core of it, like why do you wake up and film yourself and it's it's the reason I love it. Like, I love it. I was just saying yesterday, I was like pulling up to my house with my girlfriend, Heidi, and I was like, man, I freaking love my life, man. Like, yeah. And it's not that I love the things that are in my life, it's that I love the fact that I, I, I have freedom to do what I want. And I, I choose, I purposely choose to continue like putting myself in these positions to keep working and doing this and doing these goals, but I literally just love every, everything that I do so much. And I think that I, I was so lucky to find that early um, even when I was training at that camp Monday, Wednesday, Friday, like I knew, I was like, wow, this is what I like. And at that time I thought, okay, maybe when I'm like 25, I'll, I'll be a trainer. You know, I want to be a personal trainer. And I never would have imagined the sort of <laughs> sideline sort of route that this whole thing went. But I knew that it was something related to fitness I enjoyed. It was people because I wanted to work with people. And then me being kind of alone in a dorm room led to a camera, which led to YouTube, packed with consistency, led to five and a half years later, a great platform with amazing supporters that are not, not in, I don't want to say invested into the channel or, or my life or anything, but they draw something from the channel, whether it's, enter, it, it could just be Maybe they feel like you, like you did back when you were like 17, 18, right? They don't have anyone around them they don't have a that they can look at yeah, yeah. and for, for me straight up my, my my role model when i was 17 18 was greg plitt and why was it it was because man this guy was like late 20s killing it you knew about investments you know had a great like, looked like he had like the the best life and like yeah. he was on these cover magazines and fitness female fitness models were like all over him and he was like <laughs> on tv she, man that guy's living the life i, I want to be like that guy yeah. you know and i think that Everyone needs, not everyone needs, but I think it's good to have someone or something that you can look at yeah. and strive for. And for some, that might be a car. That, might, that could be a Lamborghini hanging on a kid's bedroom wall. You know, yeah. It could be their motivation, and that's fine as long as they get going and start working. And it doesn't matter what that subject is as long as it gets people fired up, like I said. And I'm taking that concept with Summer Shredding back to that question. I'm giving that Lamborghini poster, right? And I'm hoping to just get people moving. And then once people get moving, they realize that, oh, wow, I'm moving and I forgot about that Lamborghini. I forgot about the cash prize. I'm just doing it because I'm doing it. And I love it now. And I and love I'm it seeing now. seeing results and now, now. And then they're hooked into, yeah. trans, into their own life. My, my biggest ambition, I had that poster in the garage, of course, right? Mm -hmm. That Ferrari in the garage, that poster, man. That was a dream for me. Yeah. But more than anything, it was like being able to give back to my, to my mom and my dad mm -hmm. and my sisters. And those little moments where like I got to surprise my little sister for her 17th birthday you know, with the car that she always dreamed of mm -hmm. and surprise my mom and dad and do certain things for the family that like, I'm just, I feel so blessed I've been able mm -hmm. to do. Um, that's something that like, I feel like has been one of the, the main, like I guess milestones in my life mm -hmm. for success. Um, how did it feel to be able to, I mean, I know you've lied, I saw the video, yeah. your dad basically cried on yeah. video, man, when you surprised him with that new car. Yeah. Man. How does that feel? So, like, fun fact, things? I've only watched the video once. I saw it before it went up on YouTube and then said, okay, it's, good. it's all right, then posted it, and I haven't watched it. I can't watch it, man. But um, that was, hands down, that moment was the most memorable, rewarding moment I've ever felt in my life. So my dad currently drives a 2005 Honda Element. It's got 300 plus thousand miles on it. And the past two, three months, it's been breaking down on the highway. It's been rattling. Um, his speedometer like, is broken, so he doesn't know how fast he's going. And he's put a lot of money into the car to keep it like running. So buy him in a car for his birthday. 16? Yes, it is a 2016. You good, bro? I've always looked forward to the day where I'd be able to not provide for my family but to be able to treat my family and treat my loved ones and um, it's here so uh, we're gonna do it so yeah um, crazy 
crazy, crazy. message I just want to reiterate is that you need to try things out. You need to see what you like. And I said it earlier, but be conscious of when you're doing things and testing things out, what are you drawn to? It doesn't matter what, what are you really drawn to that you really enjoy? Make that a hobby, start working on that. Build that as a craft while you're, while you're doing your school. You don't have to be, a, you do everything you're, you're kind of supposed to do. Follow the route, you get a job, but do this as a hobby. Work on it, work on it, work on it. And eventually say this is something that you have to do steady. This is your hobby, you give more time, more time. You're sleeping less, you're sleeping less and less and less. You come to this point where you realize, wow, this hobby could really be something. And then all of a sudden, it kinda, you kind of take off like that. And you can make that jump. You can drop this and really go with what you love. But too many people don't find out what they love. And they're caught in this, man, I feel just running through the, running through the motions, you know? So um, the, the best thing is just be conscious and pay attention to what you enjoy. Spend time making that your thing. Get really good at that. And eventually, years later, it could become something big if you really want it to. And if some shy, silent kid could do it, to be a YouTuber, then you can do it too. You can do whatever you want to do. So. But come on time, we'll just head home. Raise a white flag. It's on a lost and glory gone. Now we're gonna march to certain death. With these landmines in our chest. Every night, another rain. We both stare a thousand yards away. story is guys you have to have a vision bigger than you and you have to have the dedication to see it through and know that there is no such thing as an overnight success Christian started at ground zero when nobody was looking and that's what it's gonna truly take for you to make that vision a reality and be a great leader Christian proves that by his character how he treats his team how he treats his family how he treats his customers and the people in his gym how he treats the movement that he's created with Alpha Lee and it's just getting started I can't wait to see what, what Christian has in store this year in 2018 so guys make sure to comment below let me know what you think about this episode of Christian Guzman a lot of you had asked for this episode and let me know who else you want to see in this season or maybe next season and you know what? If you guys want some Leaders Create Leaders gear, make sure to get it and uh, head to leaderscreateleaders.com. We appreciate all the support. Make sure to subscribe. Until next episode, it's your boy G. Peace. <laughs>